I am a Tibetan uh, living in the East Bay, and I have my hands folded uh, to pay my respects to you. You are a hero to many Tibetans, uh, as well as, of course, the world around uh, who struggle for democracy. As a Tibetan, I want to ask you, um, we are approaching March 10th, and uh, this is the 52nd national uprising for Tibetans around the world. And we represent also a nonviolent, peaceful movement that is led by your uh, Nobel laureate colleague, His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. We are deeply inspired by the Burmese people, by your leadership, and I want to ask you, how can those of us, the scatterlings of Burmese and Tibetans and fellow democratic-seeking freedom activists around the world come together, work together to galvanize our voices and our strength and do what you are single-handedly leading in Burma across the world as we have seen in the Arab world recently. How can we bring that fervor into Asia and what advice do you have to keep the inspiration alive for those of us who are activists around the world? And I pray for your long life and your safety. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have great reverence for His Holiness the Dalai Lama and his teachings with regard to compassion and loving kindness and to a peaceful movement. I think that if we all work at opening up our hearts and minds, we will be able to achieve true unity. I'm, I must take the opportunity here to say that I have been always been concerned about the lack of unity among the different groups, uh, different Burmese groups working outside Burma for democracy. If we are committed to a particular goal, then we should be able to unite. And especially if that goal is a good one, if that goal is not meant to harm people, but to try to help people, then I think that we have to lay aside our personal prejudices and all our little, well, all our little selfishnesses and all our, uh, all our little weaknesses in order to go forward together. I would be so appreciative if all the Asian peoples of the world could get together, or at least the freedom loving Asian peoples of the world could get together and work together, not just for a particular country or a particular people, but for all those peoples in all those countries which are suffering from oppression. And uh, it would not be just a matter of fighting, because fighting sounds aggressive. Uh, it's not just fighting for what you want, but it's also a matter of making people understand that what you want is, in the long run, something that will benefit everybody concerned. I think I said earlier that this is something you would like the military to understand in Burma. But what we're doing is for them as much as it is for the rest of the country. And so if all the peoples of the world who want freedom, who want uh, human rights to be respected, if they could get together, if the, they, the Asian, well, well, to start with, how about the Asian students of Berkeley getting together and working on Asian issues, the issues of Asian freedom? and Asian progress, that would be a first step. And knowing Berkeley to be the, place, the kind of place that it is, I'm sure you would uh, receive a lot of support for such a movement. Thank you. Thank you. Next audience question, please. Hi, Dasu. My name is Karen, and I have read a lot about your personal life, um, like that you had you weren't able to be with your husband when he passed away, and that you haven't seen you hadn't seen your sons for many years until your release. I was wondering what was going on through your mind at the time when you had to make these difficult decisions, and how you felt when you finally met your son again. Thank you. I don't think these decisions are made in the moment. I think they uh, they are made slowly over time. Uh, as you decide what you're going to do, it's, it's a choice you make. You make certain choices, and these choices lead on to other choices. And once you have made the choice to commit yourself to a particular cause, then you have to uh, give up other choices. For example, I would very much have loved to be by my husband's side during his last moment, but then I had to make a choice. Do I put my own feelings above the need of the movement to which I had committed myself in Burma. 
of course, the choice was made very much easier for me for the, by the fact that my husband was very, very supportive and very, very understanding. And to the last moment, he was quite selfish and uh, selfless in his support for the movement for democracy in Burma. He did not make it difficult for me. And uh, it was the same with my son. They have always shown me consideration and understanding. And um, it was uh, not... Uh, it was not a very happy thing to be away from them for so many years, but it was a very, very happy moment when I saw my son again after more than 10 years of separation. Thank you. And this will be the last audience question of the day. Hello, Don San. Um, my name is Jane Wynn. The Mi Bama Namaya Kiyom Chiba. Um, this is okay. such a serendipitous moment to be speaking to you because I remember meeting with you with my mother in your home in Yango in 1996 when I was six years old. And now I'm a student at Berkeley getting the chance to speak to you 15 years later. I feel so blessed to be afforded this opportunity. I'd like to ask you what your proposal of action would be for people like myself who are who have had their roots in Burma but are now getting educated and um, in America and also the Burmese community in America as well. What can we do to best help you fight for democracy? Well, first of all, please don't forget your roots. You say that your roots are in Burma, that is true, and I think you can't forget your roots. You should not forget your roots because uh, it will enrich you if you are able to grow up in two cultures, in two countries, and to be, to be able to value both countries equally. Because I think that those of you who have settled abroad must be loyal to the countries in which you are now living because there is much that those countries have done for you. But at the same time, I would not like you to forget Burma. I would like you to remember that there is a need in Burma for educated people, for help from uh, qualified people, that the young people in Burma have none of the opportunities that you have out there in the United States. So, I would so much appreciate it if young people in the United States, young people from Burma, would concentrate on helping young people in Burma to get a better education. Perhaps you would like to get together an educational fund, or perhaps you would like to uh, set up a scholarship. I would like you to do something practical apart from giving us your moral support, which also is very important. We value moral support. That is what and encourages us to go on all the time. But practical support, if you would like to join our youth network and support educational causes, that would be very helpful. Um, I can't hear you very well anymore. There are sort of funny noises coming over the telephone. But uh, if you can hear me, I would like to thank all of you for this opportunity to communicate with the young people of Berkeley because the future, of course, belongs to the young, as everybody knows, and the young have the energy and the opportunity to help to change the world. And we are in the process of trying to change our society here, and we hope to work with all those all over the world who believe in the right kind of change. So thank you very much. Dosu, uh, we'd like to end the call now. Are you still there? Yes, and uh, thank you for your very, very... <laughs> a few final words. I just want to say, Dosu, you are an inspirational figure to two, so many people here and around the world. On behalf of here and joining live on the Internet, I'd like you to know that you will never stand alone because we are with you in spirit and we support your cause for democracy in Burma. Dosu, thank you so much for joining us this evening, and we hope you'll be able to join us again in the near future. Ladies and gentlemen, one last round of applause for Aung San Suu Kyi, please. Well, thank you.
Thank you, and please keep in touch. Thank you, Dosu. Take care. Goodbye. Please keep in touch. Thank you.